my name is Avi. I'm your soul coach. Welcome to your July 2020 energy forecast. We have wrapped up our summer eclipse season with our last eclipse just very the other day on the 4th or the 5th depending on where you are of July 2020. <clears throat> For those of us who are super sensitives and feel the energies usually about a week before they hit the mass consciousness, the days leading up to that were really intense, absolutely exhausting and there was tremendous purging, tears, cleansing, detoxification which I spoke about in the two videos that I did in preparation for those energies. There's still this sense of completion as we move into July now. And it's also a sense of like giving up, giving up addictions that have caused you pain and suffering and repeated habits and cycles that simply don't add benefit to your, your worldly experience. So a lot of people looking at addictive behaviours, addictive thought patterns, I think that's really the root of it, but the thought patterns lead to addictive behaviours. So it's all connected. Um, Perhaps seeing that you've had an obsession with seeing yourself in a certain negative light for so long and that needs to go. That needs to be replaced with self-love, with new pendulums or thought patterns, thought clouds of completely surrendering and embracing you as you without trying to go against your natural rhythms. There's been a deeper look at our rhythms, our tones, our frequencies as we go deeper into the year of 2020. And it's about being really, really sincere, really brutally honest with yourself about these tones, these rhythms. Do you like them? Is this rhythm a natural reflection of your soul blueprint. And you'll know that because you'll be moving through your life with grace and with ease if it is. There'll be a sense of flow. You'll know you're in the flow because when we are taking on someone else's rhythm, it's unnatural for us. We can do it for so long you know, but it's, it's like our own soul rhythm will eventually kick in and pull us back into a slower pace. Usually, not always, but quite usually, super sensitives can often be amazing, extraordinary hybrids of, or ambiverts, of being introverted. But once the soul role the soul hat goes on being quite extrovert. So when you're doing your videos, when you're teaching your workshops, when you're working, doing your, your healing on your clients, when you're nursing and caring for your patients, there's tremendous energy. You're extroverted. You, you're not afraid to, to, to point out, you know, uh, the negative patterns in your patient, in your client. You're able to really speak up and say the things that really need to be said. And you have that courage, you have that, bra that braveness in you to do that because the soul kicks in on your behalf and it's just, it flows. But when you're alone, when you're in your own private space, you can be very quiet, you can be, you know, much more subdued and much more subtle with your own personal relationships. 
And this is very typical of psychic super sensitives and empaths. When they're doing their work, their soul work, there is this firing up of energy, which is fantastic. And it's, it's, it's very empowering. It's, it's a sense of satisfaction in your work that yes, the soul is saying, this is what you're here to do. But if that's not balanced with a slowing down and with that quiet time on your own or surrounding yourself um, in very present, consciously present moments with family and friends and soul groups, there can be um, an imbalance in becoming overly identified with your soul role and with being needed. So you can really burn yourself out with the overgiving. And those themes are being brought up into light right now because I spoke with this in the previous video that the last eclipse was talking about purging anything that's out of balance and also looking at the old wounds. So as we move forward now into July 2020, there is a need to create a harmony between the brain and the heart. Those two organs, let's take it into a more spiritual perspective. The heart, Christ consciousness, in harmony with the physical physical mind and the higher consciousness the higher mind we need to we need to create synergy we need to bring it all together and create this beautiful sphere of energy that is flowing and moving and dynamic um, but it knows when to slow down and when to, you know, rest and recuperate, because many of you are talking about pure exhaustion and lots of people right now have just been in a state of, you know, a lot of crying, a lot of weeping, a lot of bringing up those things that need to be looked at, that need to just be released, just honoring that sadness that's there. Um, and then, also knowing when to, you know, make, to activate that sphere and to move it and to use it and to really express that beautiful soulful energy. So there is this need for intuitively making decisions from the heart combined with the head and having, and having that, that togetherness, okay? So maybe in the past, you were told to only use your mind and use your physical mind and use your head. So you were all head, mm -hmm. you were all in with the head. And then that led you to make very sterile, non-soul connected decisions that were cold and didn't, didn't feed you, you know, in your relationships, in your jobs, in the choices you made. Or maybe you were all heart and you were all gung-ho from the heart but you neglected to bring in your physical needs, your physical comforts. Um, you neglected to factor in the fact that you are a creature, you know, you're an animal, you're a human being here with um, practical needs that must be met for you to, to be your best self, to be able to um, enjoy the physical ness and everything else that goes with that of this experience it's vital now that you learn that you study that you understand the harmonics the harmony the synergizing of the heart with the mind and bringing it all together and I think that, you know, mindfulness is missing. As I told you before, I'm not crazy about that term, mindfulness, because I think it misses the importance of bringing in the heart. The heart can be so neglected, but that doesn't mean that we 
don't include the organ of the brain because the brain is actually the antenna that receives the soul direction. So, but the thing is the heart has a tremendous, like huge impact when it's connected, when this chakra is connected with these chakras and all the chakras, when, when the central meridian points are open and fired up, everything is connected so you will get the right intuitive inspiration but the brain has to be open to receiving that higher mind that higher consciousness direction and focus and guidance so it's about understanding that all parts of you have their role to play in your expansion that nothing is created without purpose, that nature doesn't um, create, you know, willy-nilly. <laughs> nature creates with a deep sense of purpose and everything has its, its role to play and everything and every emotion has a time and a season for you to experience it in your life. And we can cling to certain parts that we love. We can cling to certain emotions or times in our lives that represent us feeling our, our you know, highest self, us feeling radiant and beautiful and all that stuff and feeling connected. But clinging to that is every bit as non-productive and ineffective as clinging to, you know, sadness and depression. We often talk about clinging to sadness and depression, anxiety and all that stuff um, as, as being an obstacle. But there are, there are times that we often cling to, um, maybe we had an incredible relationship when we were 18, or maybe we had an amazing two years in our life when we were in our late 20s. And we can cling to those memories and we can cling to that version of ourselves. So much so that 20, 30, 40 years might pass and you're still trying to recreate that feeling by making the same choices you made at that time or, you know, trying to look that way or keeping your style or your hair or your, you know, it's amazing how this seems like so superficial, but it's not because it's symbolic of a part of your spirit clinging to something that's past, something that's no longer relevant to you in this time-space reality right here, right now. And that's why it's so important that every day we breathe into the gracious present moment because it keeps us connected to where we're meant to be in this moment not where we were even though that was beautiful and that was an adventure and that was exciting um you can use it as evidence that as we move into the end of this year that there's lots more to come because there always is more to come even if you were you know 105 on your deathbed there's so much more to come because that ending is a new beginning. But the reason I called um, the, the, the last energy forecast, the video completion is because we have to make peace and complete all those past stories, like all of them, not just the bad and the anxiety and the depression and the, you know, the OCD. I'm talking about even the good stuff that you've been secretly harboring you know, and just saying, well, if I just keep this memory of this love or this job I had alive, um, you know, then I, then that's still a part of me. No, that's not how it works. You're going to have to, you're going to have to just open up your hands and stop clinging on to that because that is wasting energy and it's pulling you down. And I just recorded, um, recently, um, a channeled message it should be the video before it should be up by now um, and it's 
that's what that message, it, it, that message just was recorded out of nowhere. I was literally um, tidying up the kitchen and I heard a fly buzzing around the room and I felt the need, I felt called to literally just sit down and record a video. And it was, I just went straight into channeling mode and it was all about giving up resistance. And that's what I'm talking about. It's about releasing the resistance to, to all that you've been, to all that you are, to all that you, that you will ever be. But that starts with letting the past go. And that starts with integrating whatever is left over, whatever has been suppressed, whatever fears are finally looking you square in the eye and saying, I have nowhere to run. I don't know where to go. Like, what's next? I, 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 I run out of hiding places. That's what July is about. It's about going, give up the game. You're right, honey. It's okay. There is no hiding places left. We are in the new earth. We are vibrating in a fifth dimensional consciousness. Why would you need to hide? Why would you need to be afraid? There's nothing to be afraid of here. We're in the 5D. We made it. You've arrived. You don't have to keep running around in circles, exhausting yourself, trying to fit something into a space it doesn't belong or trying to keep up a rhythm, trying to be the color red when you're the color blue. Just be blue. Just go, I'm blue. It's okay. Or I'm yellow. I'm yellow. And that's all right. This is where I'm at right now. That's okay with me. Because like that channeled message, um, the angels were saying, if you keep fighting the fly in the room, you know, if you're running around going crazy like my boyfriend often does, <laughs> he can't deal with flies. I mean, I, I don't particularly enjoy having a fly flying around my kitchen, right? But I've just learned to just let it be. I just open the window and I say to the fly, when you're ready, you know, can you please leave? You're not, you're in the wrong place. You got into the wrong space. Out you go out the window. And the fly finds its way out and it's fine. But it was just a perfect symbol in that moment of channeling um, that the angels pointed out that that's what people have been doing for eons on planet Earth. Fighting against, battling against wars. You know, even being a warrior, there's war in there. You're a warrior. You're, a, you're bringing war into your sense of identity. Why would you do that? Why would you choose that when there is this perfectly balanced and harmonious option of a peaceful path that, yes, it seems like a slower rhythm. It seems... Um, it's like maybe your ego thinks, well, that can't be viable because... It can't be that easy. You see, the ego mind wants to tell you, it just can't be that easy. It can't be that peaceful. Well, why not? Who says? Who says? Because that's not what Source is saying. That's not what Spirit says. Spirit says, you get to choose. It's all there on the table. And that is what 2020 has been about. Quarantine, pandemic, all this stuff. You've been shown everything. You're showing, you're being shown all the truths, right? We're being shown the crazy stuff that's been going on in America. The race war. Again, another war, okay? Which is completely unfounded. Um, we're being shown the medical war. We're being shown um, all these documentaries and rabbit holes of crazy, horrible ugly stuff that's going on in the universe but we're also being shown amazing positive uplifting inspiring stories of communities getting together of neighbors helping their elderly neighbors and bringing food over making sure that they're well looked after of grandchildren doing their grandmothers and grandfathers shopping because they're not allowed to leave the house because they're cocooning 
we've been shown wonderful things and I've talked at length in my videos about focusing on the good things that have been happening with this, the first, you know, half of 2020. So we're being shown the whole uh, gamut of what's available to us because spirit is saying it's time to choose. It's time to decide. What do you want? And in that channeling video, if you haven't watched it, definitely check it out because I was, like I said, it came out of nowhere. It was very, it was one of those really powerful moments that I, you know, I get an upload and I just have to go into that space. And I just feel when that happens, it should be shared. I often get a lot of channelings that I don't share. I don't share. But I, I just felt compelled to share it with you. So there's a reason that I'm saying this to you. You're meant to, you're meant to get that message, okay? But they were saying that it's like getting in a car, turning on the ignition and not knowing where you're going. Like, how are you going to get how are you going to get where you want to go if you don't know where the destination is, right? So there's a, you know, we have to kind of start really deciding what is 5D for us now? What does that mean? Because we are creating this as we go along. What do we want this to look like? What do we want um, our societies, our education, our financial institutions to represent? What, what, how do they work? How, what do they look like? How do they feel? These are the things that we are deciding now. And as we tune into how we want to feel, those things will begin to be molded and begin to be created in a reflection, in the image of how we're feeling, of how we're loving ourselves. Like the typical nine to five job, <laughs> that's pretty much dying out because people don't want to feel like that anymore. They don't want to feel depleted and exhausted and no time for their children or family or friends or partners when they come home from work. They want to feel in control of their time. So that's why that's changing. That's why more and more people are reflecting that shift in perspective. So July is I feel that the, the energies won't always be very comfortable. It's not going to be a convenient vibrational time, okay? Um, that's not to say that July won't be fun and won't have pockets of joy and feeling lots of peacefulness because I do feel, um, I felt a lovely peacefulness wash over me um, as, you know, at the in the current first week of July, I feel those, I feel a peacefulness is there. And I'm sure many of you are feeling that too. But I am aware that there is, there is work to be done. I don't feel that we're going to be actually getting out the shovels and digging up the holes and doing the work right now in July. I think that will come near the very end, going into August. But I feel there is a need to really get, really become connected to self-love, to, to what, it, what it means for you to have this harmonious flow of your everyday life and actually deciding how that's going to play out in your Monday to Sunday what that's going to feel like and trying on if you're not sure what that is trying on different versions of that and deciding maybe now I want to work from home maybe I don't want to go into the office every day and actually expressing that to your boss actually putting that forward or maybe you've decided you want to be self-employed or you want to divorce or you want to um you want to have a child. I mean, these, these, but what I'm saying is that the decisions, the choices that you explore and you implement now are going to have a humongous impact for years and years and years to come, not just in your lifetime, but it's actually going to change how society and how our cosmic culture is going to play out. So 
I don't want you to put any pressure on yourself. If there's any importance you're putting on that, just shake it off now because that was the pressure we were building or feeling building as we got into uh, eclipse season and we were feeling that pressure and it was really causing you know people to just burn out all over the place and, and just break down you know take that pressure off that's a really important principle when you put too much importance on something you actually hold it away from yourself so don't do that know that this is happening this is naturally unfolding these things are happening but you just have to find the rhythm to get in the flow with it that's the thing for July. That's, I just, that just came in there really succinctly. Find the flow and move in that direction and dance that rhythm. Even if it's slow and steady and doesn't feel as, you know, as maybe you feel like you should be, you know, <laughs> bopping around the place. Don't put that pressure on yourself. If the flow right now is just you know, just slow and graceful and just letting the current just pull you, letting the current, letting the, st the stream flow, move you gently down, down, down the stream. And um, please just, just sit back and let yourself be carried. But in your consciousness, in your heart and your mind, knowing that where you end up, is a beautiful place and it's 